Good evening, everyone. I'm Archit Shadri. Thanks so much for joining us. Today is Friday, August the 4th. The time now is 9.30 in New York, 2.30 in London, 3.30 in Cape Town, and 7 p.m. here in New Delhi. Well, TGIF, thank God it is Friday. Tonight, we'll focus on technology and travel. So everybody wants a good flight deal and travel the world, but is it really as expensive as people make it out to be? We're going to give you some travel tips and talk to experts to make your next vacation more affordable. That story shortly, but first, a novel travel story with a bit of a technology twist. All right, super fast trains and planes have already cut down on our travel time, but what if we told you that there is a new mode of transportation that promises to cut down those hours by minutes? That's right, minutes. Yep, that's what it is. It is called Hyperloop. It is described as the future of transportation. Here's how it works. As we uh, mentioned about the uh, travel time, you know, these things make it much, much easier. But with Hyperloop, it will save you a lot of time. In fact, it's being tested out in Nevada, the United States. Here's exactly what Hyperloop is all about. The promise of a Hyperloop to cut travel times from hours to minutes has sparked a global buzz. Hyperloop One is just one of the many interests placing their bets on this dream project. But what exactly is a Hyperloop? The Hyperloop was first pitched by serial entrepreneur Elon Musk. In August 2013, he published a 57-page document detailing plans for a super-fast transport system which carries passengers in pressurized tubes at speeds which are close to a supersonic jet. Since then, universities and entrepreneurs have jumped at the idea. Hyperloop's design is similar to how a puck behaves in a game of air hockey. Hyperloop One, one of two companies to have pitched the Hyperloop concept in India, wants to ferry passengers inside tube-like structures called transporters. The transporters travel inside massive tubes, levitated and surrounded by a cushion of air at speeds of more than a thousand kilometers per hour. As per Musk's designs, one transporter can carry around 28 passengers alongside their luggage, which is stored in the front or the rear of the capsule. When Elon Musk conceived the Hyperloop, he said that building the transport system to connect Los Angeles to San Francisco will cost $6 billion. At first impressions, the idea of the Hyperloop seems like a scene straight out of a sci-fi movie, but experts say that high research and development costs may very well be the speed breaker in our path to high-speed travel. Bureau Report, Vion. All right, to so get perspective on this story in our studio, we're joined by Ajay Shankar, the former Secretary of the Ministry and Commerce. Thank you, sir, for joining us. We appreciate it. First question, Hyperloop. How, if possible, will that impact Indians, you know, making travel time much faster? We've seen the infrastructure perhaps at this point isn't there just yet. Uh, Hyperloop is a disruptive technology and it is as disruptive as air travel was. So if it works and if it comes to India, it would enable India to leapfrog. And if you see in our development process, when it came to mobile phones, we leapfrogged. So most Indians saw the mobile phone rather than the landline. We are doing the second leapfrogging now right. with smartphones. So if Hyperloop comes to India, then India would leapfrog through Hyperloop and skip the stage of bullet trains or super fast trains. They're talking about minutes. They're talking about really cutting down at travel time and this busy hustle. Everybody wants it to be much faster, cheaper, quicker, but is that really possible, you think, or what are perhaps some of the, uh, the, the, the pitfalls, the downsides that we're not uh, really seeing? Now, as of now, conceptually, it's a winner. So, so it cuts down travel time, its costs are not unreasonable, 
it is therefore affordable, etc., etc. The challenge would be to see that all the technology development goes through without difficulty, safety standards are set, approval systems are in process, and that is relevant for the entire world. When it comes to India, it will be important whether the system would be able to take a deep breath and take the big decision to leapfrog. All right, well, let's also get a little bit more uh, clarity on the most uh, recent development when it comes to Hyperloop. Well, the Hyperloop concept certainly looks promising. The good news is that a few companies have already been aggressively working to make it a reality, so much so that Hyperloop has passed another key milestone in its journey to bring it to different countries. Startup Hyperloop One Two, has completed one, another round of five. tests of what can be called the near supersonic rail system. The company successfully finished the test at its full scale test track in Nevada. As the company explains, a Hyperloop pod was put to test and was fired through a tube which was depressurized to the equivalent of 200,000 feet above sea level. Hitting record speeds, the pod reached an unprecedented speed of 192 miles per hour during the test, which is close to the planned functional speeds that the company is aiming for future Hyperloop installations. Hyperloop 1 ensures that the test was safely conducted. All components like motors, controls, the vacuum system and the magnetic levitation were tested beforehand. Talking about the experience, the company claims that it offers better safety than passenger jets and ensures lower build and maintenance costs than high-speed trains. Now that the company has shown how the concept works and has tested it successfully, it is ready to go commercial. Hyperloop One is ready for talks with partners, customers and governments around the world about the full commercialization of the new travel technology. While Hyperloop 1 aims to have one running by 2021, it is yet to be seen how talks with the government materialize worldwide and when the regulations for this new mode of transportation are put into place. Bureau Report, we on. All right, let's get more per, uh, perspective on this story. You know, we also wanted to find out about Hyperloop. You know, uh, they are in talks with the Indian government. But, Ajay, it's not going to be very pocket-friendly, is it? In terms of affordability for the average traveler, there are still some hurdles, and perhaps uh, not are, everybody's going to benefit. There are two major issues involved. One is an issue at the international level, where the regulatory framework, the safety protocols, etc., have to be put in place by right. the developers of the technology and what I would consider the international system. The other is that within India, would we be prepared to take a big leap forward? Let me also ask you a question sort of as you wrap up this discussion on Hyperloop. The, uh, you know, uh, in terms of airlines and other modes of transportation, if Hyperloop does become a reality in India, could there be a win-win for consumers because they may have to lower their prices to match or not really because they're two different entities? Uh, this is a disruptive technology and on the back of envelope calculations, it's highly cost effective and competitive with anything else in the market right now. All right. So, so if it delivers on its conceptual possibilities, then it's a winner. We'll have to wait and watch to see how well they do perhaps here or in other parts of the world. Ajay Shankar, thank you so much for your perspective on Hyperloop. Thank you so much tonight.